All right, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. So we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you guys actually what I got on my haul today. I woke up at 4.45 a.m. to go to the produce terminal. And I've been up all day basically shopping at the produce terminal, going to different stores, going to nurseries, picking up plants, picking up produce, and then driving all the way home. It's currently almost 8 o'clock actually at night. And I've just been up straight. And uh, I got to get this stuff unloaded. And uh, hopefully before it goes dark, I'll be able to show you guys everything. So we're just going to try to do a real quick style, give you guys a few pointers and tips along the way. All right, so I packed all kinds of stuff. They gave me some packing material when I stopped by one of the nurseries. Um, stopped by... Pa Cal Poly Pomona Farm Store <laughs> got these cantaloupes that are extremely ripe. You could tell if a cantaloupe's ripe by smelling it, and these smell quite flavorful and delicious. Uh, 29 cents a pound for these guys. Let's see, also got some cool plants at the Cal, Cal Poly Pomona Farm Store. I'm gonna go coffee, not because I drink coffee. Um, you know, I look as, co as coffee beans and coffee derived from the coffee beans themselves as a medicinal food, not necessarily as a food you should consume on a regular basis. Although I do believe that you should eat coffee beans or the coffee fruit, sorry. You should eat the coffee fruit on a regular and consistent basis. It's the skin of the coffee. There's not a lot of fruit on there. And most people don't know about this. I've had coffee cherry when I visit Hawaii. And I'll be looking into buying some, you know, coffee cherry like dried fruit or powder uh, due to its high health benefits and I hope to grow some myself. Alright in this big box here we have a lot more plants and I'm not really going to go over them. I got some African potato mint, some faux tea, some spilanthes and if you want to know more I will do an episode on my Growing Your Greens channel. Link is down below in the description with uh, detailed information about the plants I bought and the specific nurseries I got them at. Uh, coming out, we got this, uh, this they're, they're throwing this away. This is like one of those uh, containers or uh, plastic reusable produce flats, which could be handy for who knows what. <laughs> then we got a case of Kumado tomatoes. So these are hothouse grown. Um, these are probably one of the healthiest tomatoes money can buy because of their black, blackish, deep colored pigment instead of red pigment. It's higher in anthocyanins. Got two different kinds in clamshells and in the uh, paper cardboard little packages. These may run, these are usually pretty cheap at Trader Joe's, $2.99 a pound, or yeah, for a container. Um, at the grocery outlet, they're recently seen for $1.99 uh, for one pound, and at the 99 only store, I got them for a buck. So this whole case was like, I don't know, 11 bucks, because there's 11 packages. We got this bag that's probably dripping wet now. This is crazy. <laughs> And inside here, my cooler bag, we have basically 10 pounds. Ugh. And this was all ice this morning, so it's all melted. But I'll show you guys what it is. These are all 10 pounds of organic Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're still kind of cold. These will get processed, basically. I'm going to um, freeze dry them. So I'll have freeze dried Brussels sprout powder. Uh, yeah, this is 10 pounds of Brussels sprouts. Actually, these were only seven bucks. So that's amazing. I don't like things that are in ice because it just really makes a mess. So I had it in this cooler bag that's really soaked and wet. I need to just dry it in the sun. And uh, and then I actually put it on a tarp so it wouldn't get my car all wet. All right. Next, we got the backpack coming out. This is just what I travel with. I travel with a juicer this trip. I juice lemons for my friend's tree to add to my sugarcane juice, which is also inside. Um, got my juicer in there, juice watermelon for the trip back to keep hydrated instead of drinking water. Uh, juice is a functional water because it's, you know, watermelon especially is mostly water with lycopene, other vitamins and minerals, all right? Coming out more, what else do we got? All right, we got a lot of stuff underneath here, but above we have more plant starts. So uh, this, these are plant starts from, I think, Whole Earth Nursery down in San Diego. They go to the Vista and Hillcrest Farmers Market. Um, yeah, tooth egg plants, balanthes, variegated uh, uh, plantain, some, uh, some New Zealand spinach, and oh, this cool, this cool basil. It's, uh, it's called green pepper basil. Oh, it's a perennial basil. That's really cool. 
Anyways, once again, for the plants, link down below to my gardening channel. I got a flat from CPG Nursery, my favorite wholesale nursery. Um, we got uh, beets and some green onions that I will be planting and eating. Got some more splanties that uh, dumped over. Basically got uh, two cases of this. This is my favorite summertime cilantro substitute. It's too hot to grow cilantro in the summer here in my climate. So I grow this stuff, Popolo, which actually I like better than cilantro. It's traditionally used, I think, in uh, South America and Mexico, you know, as a flavoring agent. It loves the heat, and uh, it's, it's not looking too happy right now because I had the AC set to like 62 on the drive back, so all my produce would stay cold and fresher. Next flat coming out, I got a flat full of marigolds, CPG Nursery also. Um, I bit, Wow, they smell amazing. And I also will eat the petals. They're high in lutein and zeaxanthin. Good for your eyes. Now next, we got some poplo, another flat of poplo. I have a couple of empty beds, so they're going to get poplo beds. And I'll be able to basically freeze dry this year my excess poplo because uh, I'm going to have so much. It's cool. Coming out next, a flat of parsley. I love parsley. Unlike cilantro that bolts, the parsley can handle some summer weather, although this will be planted in the shade. Generally, I find the curly parsley does better than the Italian, and I have a mix of Italian and curly this time. Last flat of plants coming out. I got a flat full of peppers, mostly sweet banana peppers that I like because they grow really well. I got uh, some serenos and a jalapeno plant that's going to go into my garden. All right, I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove the tarp that basically catches all the dirt so the dirt doesn't go in my food. Uh, this is a new step. I used to always cover it with something, but now I'm using a tarp and I'll dump all this soil in here in my garden. All right, now you can see all the produce I bought. Um, probably my score of the day are these guys. Basically, these are Tammy um, organic Peruvian crop. Here's the receipt if you want the proof. This is from uh, Borg Produce or Pacific Trellis Fruit. Um, they're also known as Pacific West, I believe. And look at these. These are all organic tangerines. This whole case, which is nine kilograms, I don't know the math on that, 2.2 times nine, what's that, like over 20 pounds of uh, organic tangerines. Five bucks, man. Can't beat that with a stick. Now, the problem is there's a bunch of ones that are rotten like this. Look, I can probably figure right into it. Poof. <laughs> so this is a bad one. It's going to get chucked. And, uh, you know, there's a percentage bad ones in here, but you know what? Even if I get 10 pounds out of this for five bucks, that's like 50 cents a pound. I'm sure I'll get probably about 15 pounds. I had one on the drive back and they're decent. Some are a little bit bad, but you know, most of them are pretty good. So yeah, I got like four cases of these. I'll give one to a friend and, uh, most of this stuff, it's not like super high quality fruit, but you know, it's good for juicing. I could juice with some cucumbers and some celery, um, you know, make some smoothies with it. It's going to be great tangerine juice, especially this time of year, for five bucks for the whole case. It's amazing. All right, coming out, we got one of my favorite fruits. I'll put a link down below to a specific video I did on this fruit explaining more about it because everybody should be eating this one. Uh, these are known as cactus fruits. And I got these from La Sucre Produce. And they were the best place to buy them. These were, this case was 10 bucks. Um, it's non-organic, but I don't believe these are sprayed. 10 bucks. And this is 40 pounds of fruit, so that's 25 cents a pound. I got two cases of green, which tend to be sweeter, although they're not as phytonutrient rich. And then I got the red ones right here that are a lot more nutritious. I could have got ones that are more deeper red, but it would have cost me more money for like 15 to 16. I just went with La Sucre. They always give me a good deal, hook me up. All right, coming out next, we got a case of organic watermelon. Six pieces, 10 bucks, grown in California. You tap them, they sound pretty good. And if you look here at the stem end, this is one of many indicators that may mean you have a good uh, watermelon, but if you see this, doesn't mean it's gonna be good automatically. It's that little sweet spot, that little sugar uh, coming out from where the stem was cut. If you wanna know how to pick a watermelon, check the link down below for my video on my 12 tips on picking a good watermelon. All right, coming out next, we have, uh, I got like four case of organic mangoes. Guess how much these cost me? This is actually a 10 count, and the 10 count mangoes, that's a $4, so it's 40 cents each for organic mangoes. That are a really nice color. 
hopefully they'll taste as good as they look. Next up, we got a tropical exotic fruit, and I did see dragon fruit at many sellers today. They varied in price. I did also see the yellows that were like eight or nine pieces for 20 to 25. The ones that were 20 were like really looking bad. I got these guys, these are from uh, Melissa's, product of USA, so these are actually grown in Florida, not imported from Ecuador, which is many where many dragon fruits are coming in now, which many sellers may be selling. If they're imported from Vietnam, then they are irradiated. Um, Ecuador does not irradiate, and if they're from the US, they are not irradiated either. And uh, these are nice sized dragon fruits. I prefer the red on the inside. These have to be white. I will be freeze drying these. So I'll have freeze dried dragon fruit, which is completely amazing, concentrates the flavors as well as the nutrition because it removes only the water. And a case of 12. Nice sized dragon fruits from Melissa's that if you go to your local specialty grocery store, they'll probably sell you for five bucks a pound. Um, this whole case was 12 bucks for 12 pieces. That's a dollar each for really nice sized dragon fruit. I got three cases. Uh, they'll get processed and freeze dried probably tomorrow. I think we're gonna make it before we get dark, but I gotta keep moving here. We got this case, which is extremely heavy, and it's a uh, foxy organic celery stocks. So I've been doing the medical medium thing, juicing like celery, straight celery every morning. And uh, celery's coming down in price now uh, because now there's more availability because it's coming from the US. So this is, uh, I believe, US grown uh, celery. Look at that, nice celery, man. Guess how much this case costs? 30 organic celeries wholesale, $18 from the produce terminal. Um, if you go to like a major uh, produce organic distributor like Heath and Lejeune, I think this week is around 30 bucks. So this is like, 18 bucks for 30 count celery. That's like approaching like 60 cents each head. So I'll be juicing celery easily uh, for the next month. Uh, this stuff will store pretty good and uh, I'll just start drinking it faster. Have like 32 ounces a day. I've been skimping out because it was so expensive for like 16 ounces a day. Right, another score at the farmer's market. One of the things I really don't like buying at the farmer's market is peaches. You know, I like to get peaches from the farm or from the farmer's market, not from the produce terminal. Oh, sorry, did I say farmer's market? Yeah, I don't like buying peaches uh, in trade, like at the grocery store or the produce terminal, because they're often picked too early uh, before they're gonna even ripen properly. That's one problem. Problem two is that they are stored improperly. If you look at this box, I mean, hopefully it says on here, store at whatever temperature, and it's actually a fairly warm temperature, and unfortunately, they don't have different temperatures on the produce storage and the delivery trucks or when it's in the warehouse. Um, so these are usually stored too cold and then they get basically, um, you know, cold damage and then they never ripen properly, they're mealy, they don't, they don't taste good. And that's if you've bought in a lot of peach from the store and it happens like that, especially later in the season, that's what's occurred. These guys are white peaches and so this is a double layer. I don't know how many, how many pieces are in here, but this whole case, which is actually quite heavy, I'd say it's like at least, I don't know, 25 pounds. It was only $10, all organic. And you know, when you guys are selecting peaches, I want you guys to look at the stem end and make sure you don't see any green. I see very little, if any, green on these guys, so that means they're picked at a fairly good stage so that they may still ripen up properly. And I also want you guys to know that the white peaches and white nectarines are more nutritious in antioxidants uh, based on scientific studies than the standard yellow ones, which is actually goes against the common belief that more colorful foods have more antioxidants. So I got three of these cases, I got one more case of produce to share with you guys and then we'll go we'll show you guys actually what's in my cooler reel. Right, next case here is we got a case of organic cucumbers. They're a little bit rough, maybe a little bit soft and uh, it's 28 piece of cucumbers at the produce terminal. It was at uh, eight bucks actually. So that's like a super good deal. These will get juiced. I've been juicing cucumbers straight, also medical medium style, but I'll also mix this with like, actually since I got all the tangerines, I'll do like orange, uh, you know, or tangerine cucumber to mellow it out. Maybe I'll even do, um, you know, cucumber, uh, celery, and greens from my garden. My right, last few things I want to show you real quick is I got another cool plant. I got roselle and also a false roselle. These are both an edible hibiscus. I like this one because it actually has nice red leaves full of anthocyanins. These have a nice, like, sorrel style flavor, kind of tastes like lemony. And so I just pick these and eat these in my salad. The thing I picked up this trip was I got to go by Carlsbad, California to a natural spring. Uh, it's, an, it's an alkaline water spring, so I basically filled up my glass jars on the trip down, had all juice, and on the trip back, 
I filled up basically two, ga two gallons of these guys with the uh, 8, 8.2 alkaline spring water, just natural out of the ground. It's like old school, like spring from the 1800s or something. So that's cool. So the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is my cooler. This plugs into the car. It basically plugs in a cigarette lighter, keeps things like 32 degrees colder than the car. I tried to have the car at like 60 odd degrees. So this is like trying to keep this around 32 degrees because I got some special stuff in here. I definitely don't want to go bad. Uh, you know, if I get tired on the road, I snack on carrots. I have purple carrots here that are pre-washed and ready to eat so I could just crunch on something. If I'm crunching on something, I find I won't fall asleep. Um, in addition, uh, we had some cherries that I actually brought for the trip. I didn't eat. I need to eat those as soon as possible. I was supposed to uh, eat those when I took a break, but I didn't. Uh, check out what I found. I found Miyoko's um, fermented uh, cashews at the grocery outlet. These things are like, what, six, seven, eight dollars at Whole Foods? Two dollars and ninety-nine cents. Now, these are high in salt. They also contain coconut oil, which I normally don't like to eat. Um, you know, as a second ingredient, cashews are first ingredient. They're fermented. Um, but you know what? For two ninety nine, good enough. I'll add a little bit in its salad dressing to dilute it massively. These will not get used in one day or even a week, and they'll store pretty well. And next, whoop, <laughs> got my leftover salad that I took on my trip. Uh, this will actually get fed to my dog Oakley for dinner tonight. I'm sure he can't wait. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then what else I got? I stopped at Wild Living Foods, probably one of my favorite raw food restaurants uh, in the country. Actually, we got some. Uh, some wraps, I think this is the, called the Pueblo Wrap. They're super delicious. And then also I got some burgers. Uh, this is their little burgers, these are all to go. I got these at 9 a.m. this morning, so they're super fresh. I've been in this fridge all day, right here. Pueblo Wrap, this stuff is like so amazing. You got to have the opportunity to go to Wild Living Foods. Got to check them out. Hey, I'll post a link down below if I remember to my review. I got these guys, so these are raw, and I've been trying to cut my salt content. Uh, these are farmhouse culture, and if you go to Whole Foods once again, um, you guys will pay like, I don't know, five, six bucks for this stuff. At the grocery outlet, this was $1.99 right here for this uh, sauerkraut, so that's really good. I got two of them. They'll get used over time, add a little bit to my dressings or soups. I've been having problems with glass breakage, you know, when I put all these things in the cooler together. So I basically got these little silicone inserts, but I want to show you guys what's inside. So inside here, is a sugarcane juice mixed with lime juice from my friend's tree and uh, and then under vacuum and in this way I've stored this stuff for up to like three weeks without any issue it's quite good and mainly I like to use the sugarcane juice not drinking it straight but actually in recipes so like you do a miso tahini garlic dressing with this stuff <laughs> it's the bomb all right and then uh, let's see last thing I'm gonna share with you guys today before I get a run because I'm super hungry this is a find, man. I'm so glad I found this. I have an Instagram post on it. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. This stuff's actually San Diego tempeh. This is fresh tempeh, unpasteurized, living food. It's not a raw food because they gotta cook the beans, then they ferment them with the, you know, the uh, bacteria or the mold or whatever they do. And then they don't pasteurize it. They give it to you guys fresh. Um, and it has like a shelf life of only six days. That's a bad thing. The good thing is it's gonna have all the benefits you know, the probiotics and different, you know, things that the mold or the bacteria makes. And so I was really excited to find this. I bought like eight of them. They gave me a better deal. San Diego Tempeh. I'm so glad they have this. It's a vegan and gluten-free and a living food. So yeah, you know, I, it, this is the best way if you guys, uh, you know, one of the best ways to eat beans. The other, so what happens is they soak the beans, they cook them, and then they, they inoculate them. And then they become living because now it, it's full of enzymes and probiotics. And then you could eat it. I mean, they recommend cooking it, but you could eat it raw. And I haven't so far had any issues with this. I did eat one whole block of eight ounces last night. I think beans are an important part of any plant-based diet. And we should not neglect whole food categories uh, for some dietary dogma, especially when science, in my opinion, has proven uh, you know, their benefits. Now the other thing is when they cook the beans, that removes some toxins, breaks it down a little better. And then the next step is when they ferment it, it also breaks it down further so we could get better assimilation of some of the nutrients inside there. So yeah, sandiegotempe.com, put a link down below. Uh, they do not ship, you gotta be there and maybe see them at one of the farmer's markets to pick this stuff up. I forgot to show you guys something because it was hidden in my car. Um, I got these uh, organic bell peppers 
And they're one of my favorite foods. I want to encourage you guys to eat lots of bell peppers. They're high in vitamin C as well as other nutrition. Actually, I like the bell peppers more than the tomatoes. Uh, organic from the Netherlands, so they travel literally around the world. And you guys know how much bell peppers are in the store. What, $4.99, a pound maybe, depending. Um, these guys are all in nice shape, organic. Yellow, I would rather get red or orange, but yellow is what they had for the good deal. Uh, 11 pounds for 10 bucks. All these will mostly get juiced and are freeze dried. Um, and I use the juice as my soup base to make basically a nutritious soup. Instead of using water as a base, I use the pepper juice. And I think that's pretty much it for this uh, episode. It's getting dark. I got to get all this stuff inside and put away inside the fridge. I did have three fridges and I still have three, but one of them's down, so I only have two fridges right now. So we're going to have to, you know, a lot of this stuff does not have to be fridged. Like the peaches are not going to get fridged, the mangoes are not going to get fridged. Watermelon's not gonna get fridged, the cactus fruit's not gonna get fridged, but the cucumbers, the celery, the tangerines, uh, the um, Brussels sprouts, that, that stuff all has to get put in the fridge ASAP. The tomatoes, they don't have to be fridged either. Check the link down below for shopping the LA Wholesale Produce Terminal so you guys can get some of the very deals I got and also see how I store some of my produce uh, at the proper temperatures so that the stiff lasts will you know last several weeks depending on what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, hey, thumb this up. Also, be sure to share this with somebody else to, to let them be aware of some of the amazing deals you can get at the LA Wholesale Produce Store. I'll put a couple links to some of my other produce hauls that I've done in the past right down below. So, uh, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that I come out every five to seven days. You're never in a war show, or we'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Also, click the bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Uh, finally, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel, telling you all about the benefits and eating more fruits and vegetables, how to incorporate that, and how to do it practically, affordably uh, in your diet, because that's what I'm all about. I've been doing this now for the last 24 years, longer than most people on YouTube talking about this diet. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always best.